<laughs> it's tabletop time, and I'm everyone's favourite ghoulie, uh, Orc Lumberjack Cultist. I am the spooky witch with a really long face. <laughs> We're Australian, and we don't really do Halloween very much in Australia, but we want to. So we're gonna have some Halloween fun today. Yay! What are we doing, Dave? We're gonna build a slice of hell itself. That is the Garden of Nurgle. Ooh, that sounds super exciting. It sounds super spooky. And I am going to sculpt from scratch a greater demon of Nurgle as well. That means I'm on board duty. So I've gotta make the garden. Oh, mm. Gardener Jen? Yeah. And I'm ghouly, ghouly man. I'm serial killer sculptor Dave. Boo! I gotcha, didn't I? Haha. -ha. So for this build, I had an image of reimagining a greater demon of Nurgle. Think of him as a bit of a harvester or a keeper of the Garden of Nurgle. And to do that, he needs a long scythe. Making this, I just carved up the blade tip out of plastic card, roughly carving it into the shape and then knocking out little pock marks so it looked nice and old and rusted. I went and grabbed a Dremel with a burring tool and just made a whole bunch of rusted indents all over the blade of this. Heading outside to find an appropriate stick, I created a notch in the end of the stick and basically carved it out until there was space to shove in the plastic card. And with that done, the scythe was finished and I could move on to the next stage of my build. Now I wanted to build my model from the ground up and call me overconfident, but after our recent time dabbling with cosplay for the first time, I really wanted to try something more ambitious. So I grabbed some cosplay out and started sculpting some gnarly looking feet. I didn't want them to be quite human, so I made sure to give them over long toes and a weird inner toe that's a bit more like a thumb. Typically greater demons of Nurgle are always depicted as great unclean ones, huge, oversized, filth-ridden, pustule-covered, bloated monsters. But that certainly doesn't cover every aspect that Nurgle covers. He's the god of decay and, funnily enough, death and, in a weird way, life. The rebirth that comes from that death. The Garden of Nurgle is a place of decay and a place of life, where that decay feeds a new generation of life in an infinite cycle of decay. Because, of course, you can't have decay without something to decay, so life is pretty important. Now, as the god of all disease, there are many different types of diseases rather than ones that bloat you up. And I decided I wanted to make something that represented the aspect of famine and wasting diseases, things that make you thin, gaunt, and weak. This aspect of Nurgle is actually mentioned many times in the lore. A demon that exemplifies these traits is Gangrel from the Plague Guard, which is Kugath, the first amongst great unclean ones and leader of Nurgle's armies, personal legion of demons. Gangrel is this tall, thin, wasted, great unclean one who actually drags his useless legs behind him. There are so many horrible pestilence and poxes in the world, it is hard to believe that all of them end at the same place. And with greater demons of Nurgle, and greater demons in general, being made of the madness of the warp, it stands to reason that their appearances would vary considerably. Now it makes sense from a marketing point of view that Games Workshop would want to present their demon lines as being largely homogenous so they have a recognizable silhouette and a clear visual design. But I think in reality and the reality that the lore projects, there are infinite different variations of weird things within each of the demon's domain. So with that in mind, I was really intent on capturing these other elements of Nurgle's domain, creating a truly unique great unclean one that would hopefully still feel at home in the garden of Nurgle. To add some delightful detail to these feet, I cut out small pieces of plastic card, using a knife to chip the ends of them up to make them look like an old weathered toenail. I then press them into the tip of the cosplay. So it had come time to assemble the legs of my creation, and here is where frustration began to take shape. Any of you who've worked with cosplay and sculpting things from scratch have already been screaming at the screen, telling me all the things I'm doing wrong. Well, this is part of that kinesthetic learning process. Because of course, I didn't build from an armature, which was completely foolish. I thought I could make these pieces and oven bake them and everything would be hunky-dory. So I had a discussion. Either I completely abandoned the idea of sculpting something 
something from scratch and we just focus on making a Garden of Nurgle or I start again and persevere, salvaging only the feet and their beautiful little toenails. I gave up. It's all over everyone. There won't be a greater demon. And here we learn the merits of sleeping on it. I went to bed, came back the next day and decided I was going to start from scratch. This time using armature wire to create something to build my model off like I should have the first time. Now, of course you can deride me for this as much as you want, but this is only my second time ever sculpting something from scratch. So I'm bound to make a few mistakes along the way. And realizing that I couldn't just join little bits of armature together was an important lesson to learn. So before I talk to you all a little bit about the garden of Nurgle itself, I'll just let you know what I'm doing. So I'm building up an armature out of armature wire into the rough shape of a model that will fit my pose, focusing on the legs and upper torso as I can wrap wire around the top to continue out the armature a bit later on. Then I'm just getting some cosplay and roughly covering all the surfaces so that I have something to sculpt detail onto later. But before I sculpt any detail, I'll be oven baking this bad boy ready to go for stage two. So today we are making a diorama of the Garden of Nurgle and I wanted to share a little bit with you all about what the Garden of Nurgle actually is. For those who are unfamiliar with Warhammer, there are four chaos gods, Slanesh, Nurgle, Zinch and Khorne. And Nurgle is the god of decay and pestilence. Each of these gods has a vast and incomprehensible realm within the warp. The warp is basically the 40k's version of hell. It's an alternate dimension that exists alongside our own one and doesn't follow the rules of physics or the material world. Now the horrible events in Warhammer 40k have caused breaches between the two realities and the horrifying stuff of the warp often leaks into the real world. But within the warp itself there is a roiling and ever-changing landscape and each of the four gods creates a little pocket in that reality that best reflects them and their own desires. Nurgle's particular section of the warp takes place as a giant fetid garden but it is far from devoid of life. It is a huge, well, infinite and incomprehensible space that takes the form of a garden, full of old rotten mansions with strong foundations, fastnesses and strongholds of Nurgle's minions. These swamps of decaying dead and rotten meat are also filled with the explosive life that feeds on them. Bright and vibrant funguses clash for attention amongst blooming carnivorous plants and flowers with deadly aromas. Amongst these plants and in this garden, Nurgle's smallest servants, the Nurglings, constantly and mirthfully play in the bows of these bent and ancient trees, gibbering madly with the innocent fun of children in what is effectively the God of Decay's massive garden playground. And it is this setting today that we are trying to capture just a snippet of. A little slice of unlife and horrifying garden atmosphere for our Halloween spooktober spectacular. Nightmarish, I know. With a little bit of confidence confidence restored in the process, I decided to focus on something that would be really satisfying. It was time for me to work on the head. I wanted him to be eating a pumpkin to fit into our Halloween theme today. This creature is famished. He's eternally famished. So the idea of him eating food and then that food dropping from a rotten gullet and stomach that cannot hold it, eternally unable to quench his hunger, I think is a perfect representation of famine in a greater demon. As he consumes you bodily, slurping your intestines, Steins from your stomach like a spaghetti. You can sit back and think, I'm so glad that my chewed remains will fertilize the plants of the future. So to accentuate his withered visage and that chompy chompy mouth that I was going to make, I wanted to create a really gaunt and sallow looking face. Now as a greater demon, this guy's pineal gland is so uncalcified it's out of control and his third eye is fully open. I don't know what that means. Um, but uh, he's got three eyes because Nurgle and, and see how they look like the Nurgle symbol? Yeah. With his juicy sockets sculpted out with some detail in them, I put small balls of cosplay into his eyes and then used little tiny strips to sculpt on the top and bottom of those balls to create eyelids. This guy's probably dealing with a whole bunch of conjunctivitis at the same time, so let's just forgive him that droopy eyelid. As it came time to sculpt his mouth, I shoved the sculpting tool in and just let it work, allowing the natural tears in the cosplay to inform where I would have decayed tears in his flesh 
backlash later. The sides of his mouth could remain sort of not heavily detailed right now, so I was planning on adding all the sinew and tendons as I went along. So while Dave was busy at work making our monster, I got the easy task of making our board. One thing I wanted to include was these weird pods that would surround the garden. And Dave had already used expanding foam on our orc video, so you should go check that out if you haven't seen it. Expanding foam when dried kind of looks like this weird mushroomy sort of substance, and I thought this would be perfect for our garden of Nurgle. So I sprayed a couple of blobs onto a piece of cardboard and left that to dry for a couple of hours. While I was letting my expanding foam dry, it was time to move on to the board. I wanted to create a little bit of elevation to our garden. I started out by grabbing a piece of foam and sculpting it out by hand. Once I was happy with how tall it was looking, I got out the foam cutter and started giving it a little bit of texture. I made sure to wear protective gear the entire time and even opened up the garage door because it was getting a little bit smoky in there, but I think the results speak for themselves. Once it was all cut out, I just glued it down with some liquid nails and gave it a couple of minutes to dry. Once everything was dry, it was time to put on some sculptor mold. And you've seen us make this up a thousand times. And this time I just added in a little bit of gray pigment to give it a nice base color. I slopped this all around the base and left it outside to dry. I decided to put on two layers of this. The first layer for just an initial stage and a second layer that would allow me to include some definition. I really wanted to include a swamp and a road down the middle. This is where Dave's monster would be dragging his scythe along the road. So it came time to start adding some extra decoration to our board. I need to cut these out and decided what exactly I wanted to put on there. We had these really cool trees from one page rules we had printed out previously for another project and I thought these would work perfectly. They kind of already look a bit spooky so half the job's already done for me. I also grabbed a couple of bits from one of the Nurgle boxes we have around the studio. I wanted to include some Nurglings and some other bits and pieces. After putting all of the pieces together one of the things I felt like was missing was some exotic plant life. For this project specifically I wanted to give a hand at school Sculpting. I'd seen Dave making his monster and I decided I wanted to be included in the fun. I wanted to go for a more carnivorous style plants, ones that eat insects and people alive. I thought this would fit right at home on this board. One of the first plants I wanted to include was this pitcher style plant. I made this by using the same cosplay that Dave was using and this time around I feel like the cosplay was way easier to work with. I was able to get some really good detail and I was really happy with how this turned out. As well as my pitcher plants, I made some lily pads that could go in the swamp later, as well as some pumpkins which I thought was super on theme for our Halloween board. With some of the pumpkins, I wanted them to be destroyed or half eaten, and I gave a couple some really nice toothy grins. I also made one for a nurgling that would go on his head. I thought this was very on point. Why is the mouse stop working? Once my cosplay was all baked and everything was dry, it was time to start assembling our garden. I started with the bigger plants first and moved my way along to working with the smaller objects. One particular part I love about making these boards is creating little stories within the board. I specifically made a pumpkin that had been smashed open and wanted to put a nurgling inside it to look like he'd popped out of the pumpkin. Oh, and I definitely need to make sure that this nurgling had his spooky hat on. One of the greatest gifts that Nurga would give his chosen servants is immortality. Unlike the other chaos gods, Nurgul truly loves you. And if you truly committed yourself to the path of Nurgul, you were promised eternal life. Now, what does eternal life look like? Well, the idea was basically that as you went through the life as a space marine or a plague champion of Nurgul, taking on every blessing of disease under the suns, you would slowly become a corpulent mass, a gross bloated body full of every disease that could be imagined. Eventually, even the transhuman bodies of the space marines would be overcome by this concoction of disease, and even they would fall prey to them. Dying on the battlefield as a bloated mass, a crumbling pile of decay, that space marine would be reborn in the Garden of Nurgle as fresh as the day they turned to the path of chaos. Unblemished by disease, their body would be perfect. And then the cycle would start anew. And thanks to his service to Nurgle, he is being reborn, regrown in a strange alien seed pod in the Garden of Nurgle. And today is his lucky day. It's his birthday. He's going to be coming out of this pod. So I carved a hole in one of these foam things and glued this boy inside and then used green stuff to make a whole bunch of tendrils wrapping and holding him in. I included an umbilical cable attaching to his waist and also a feeding tube into his mouth. And with this all sculpted, he'll be ready for some 
Nali UV resin effects later. So I realized I had reached the limits of what I could achieve at the studio. We don't have an oven at the studio, but I do have an oven at home. And with the sculpture this large and unwieldy, I wanted to be able to save my progress at repeated intervals. So I packed up my gear and headed home. As you can see, my oven here is the perfect home for some clay. And I really should remind myself to clean it before I try and cook anything in it. But that said, it's time to get to work. First thing I did was sculpt out the head, adding the shape of a skull into the back of the head and also including a bunch of gribbly little bits of sinew and jawline down the side of the monster. On the skull sections on the back, I also used the sculpting tool and knife to cut some cracks into it where his juicy brain goo can be dribbling out. While the head was in the oven, I returned to the body and grabbed filet de bac, adding that down the, <laughs> adding that down the center of the model and including it. This would be a nice open flappy section of skin to reveal his lovely intestine noodles later on. With the left and right sides of the chest sculpted in, all the ribs done and the back flaps attached, I started to add a little bit of wiry definition to his arms. You'll also note here his big juicy hand mittens. I'll be sculpting on his fingers with green stuff later because after I start to add the plastic components onto the model, I won't be able to do any more oven baking. Most of the model was coming along looking nicely sculpted now, but I did want to do some surgical reattachment surgery. So I salvaged the feet from earlier on in the video, the only part of the original build that I managed to keep. And while these were baking, I drilled into the back of his head, getting ready for a nice bit of brass rod so I could attach the head to the torso. So I wanted to add one last gribbly little bit of fun. That was the stomach that'll be hanging from our monster's insides. So after attaching the head with some bacon bond and also some extra bits of clay, I set about making one. I made this beautiful stomach shape and then I used a sculpting tool to poke into it, basically gouging out a hole that I would then put some uh, pumpkin guts and pumpkin seeds falling out of. Made sure to use the sculpting tool to define some nice little trackier bumps to connect it to the throat. And I stuck that in his tum tum. With these pumpkin guts done, I put some lungs on either side just to fill his guts with organs. And then I'll be making some long noodles for his intestines. I figured this guy's lungs, uh, smoker's lungs, they're gonna be pretty rotten. So I used a skewer to pockmark them, driving lots of holes all over them to make them look rather rotten and not very functional. Now back at the studio with everything baked, it was time for me to do the finishing, finishing touches. So that meant using some armature wire to create a noodly intestinal support that would help this guy keep his balance. After that was done, I mixed some green stuff with Millipart and set about sculpting an approximation of fingers. And I'd been a little too ambitious with this. So some of the sculpting on the hands is a little bit rough, but he's Nurgle so I can make up for it with some technical effects a bit later. Following what I had done for the feet, I cut up little bits of plastic art and shoved them into his fingernails. Tasty. I found some awesome bits from the Sylvaneth kit that I wanted to glue onto his head and I used the green stuff to also sculpt these in more seamlessly. A lot of Nurgle models have horns or antlers and I thought these really captured the vibe and were the perfect size and shape for his head. Using the last bits of my green stuff, I also made our fun little pumpkin guts, all the chewed up food dribbling out of his guts and falling down his legs. Now it's time to bring him a little bit further into the 40K world. So I made sure to use some plastic parts, starting with a neck shackle, as well as this, some shields from the Nurgle Blight Kings kit that we've still had kicking around since the old clean Nurgle video, made for perfect attachments. A little bit of armor plating for his knee, for example. Now you might've been wondering why I'd skipped some areas of sculpting, especially in his back. And that's because the whole time I knew I was going to drape a dirty cloak on him. So I grabbed some felt and I soaked it in a mix of PVA, kind of like pre-textured paper mache. So I cut out the rough shape of a raggedy cloak, making sure to snip some holes in it. And then I draped that over the back of my Nurgle demon prints. With these pieces on, it was time for me to decorate this. And this is where I have to say a shout out to Trent Miscast. A long time ago, I wouldn't have attempted something as bold or as outrageous as this. And as it's come together, it does feel a little Nurgle Diaries-y. Well, I wanted to say that after hanging out with him a bit and participating in Monster Bash, I really feel like my creativity has been unlocked. 
I feel a lot less bound to the rules of 40K. And this technique in particular was something I saw at the Monster Bash live day, where he just grabbed a bunch of dirt, texture, and flock and covered it all over the back of his monster. I knew how good that looked for this kind of earthen beast, and I just copied it. Covering his back in PVA and then pouring thick flocks and dirt all down his back. To finish it out, I used a dirt technical paste to cover up a bunch of these areas and make them have even more texture. And altogether, I'm really happy with it. So if you've been liking this creation of a custom Nurgle thing, and I think you should probably go check out Miscast if you haven't already. He's made a whole bunch of cool things like that, and he makes awesome videos, so go send him some love. After all, I stole his texturing idea. Now as an absolute final touch on this monster, I'd use some shields to create little buckles for his cloak to be fastened on, and I grabbed some chain link and connected those up. Altogether, I really think these plastic applications, a couple of horns here, shields there, make it feel a lot more at home in the Warhammer universe. So while Dave was still making his spooky creation, it was time to spray the board. Everything was dried and it was ready for a lick of paint. Initially, I went in with the airbrush with a black primer, but this was taking a really long time. I think the airbrush wasn't working properly and I really didn't have time to clean it at this point. So I went in instead with a good old brush and the same primer and just hand painted it in. This was kind of cathartic. It actually gave me some time to reflect on the piece and think about what little features I wanted to create and what colors I wanted it to be. After laying down my black primer and giving the board some time to dry, I did take the time to clear out the airbrush. Once it was ready to go, I initially laid down some red and decided I absolutely hated this. I wanted to go with more green and bluey tones. So I tipped that all out and started with a green instead. As some of you already know, this is probably my third time using an airbrush and I do really enjoy it, but I still have a lot to learn. So just to make it easy on myself, I just went ahead and laid down some initial base colors, making sure that everything looked cohesive and it was a nice spooky green. Once I was happy with how all my base colors were looking, I went ahead and lightened some of these up, working my way with brighter greens and brighter yellows to bring out some of the texture in the board. I also went ahead and sprayed a bit of color onto some of the flowers and the pumpkins just to determine what sort of color I wanted them to be. And it also blended into the background, which gave it a really spooky Halloween feel. Ooh. Once I knew the airbrush had done its job and I couldn't get any more finesse out of it, it was time to go in with hand painting. Initially just putting in those base colors and then I'd be putting shades on top. I wanted to make sure that the pumpkins had a nice healthy glow of orange to start with and then start working in the decay. I also added a touch of color to all my flowers, making them nice and vibrant to give off a sort of poisony or sickly feel to them. No, I knew I was gonna be covering the disgusting pod that I'd created with my Nurgle Plague Marine being born in it with a whole bunch of UV resin. So I airbrushed a bunch of amber colored oranges all over the pod to give it a nice Garden of Nurgle feel. And then I hand painted just a few sections, specifically the umbilical noodles, which became pink. And I did a little spritz of green to show off that Death Guard armor. Once this was done, I mixed some yellow pigment into some UV resin and poured it into the hole. And then deliberately allowing it to pour out, used the UV light to set it. So it looked like this pimple had burst and all of these fluids were dripping down. This Plague Marine is about to be reborn. With Plague Man done, it was time for me to paint my beastie, my big Nurgle Greater Demon. And to do this, I planned on airbrushing a lot of it in the same way as we did for our cool video on Idols of Torment. I started with a gray spray and then used a white Xenothal and then used a bunch of Citadel contrasts to spray paint the broad areas of the body. Greens or dead flesh for the Nurgle skin, as well as purples and yellows to put texture and variance in areas on the model. For the inside of the guts, I went with the instant alchemy range, grabbing some reds to spray some horrible organ colors into that chest cavity. For the wood and the pumpkin, I went in with some orangey browns, building it up to a darker brown. All over the model, I dry brushed in some skin tones just to bring out a bunch of that detail in suitable colors to match the undertones. To complete the effect, I painted some gnarly nails as well as used a whole bunch of rust effects on the metal areas, especially around those shields on his shoulders. The last couple of steps was just to highlight some detail areas, painting the eyes a horrible yellow and brightening up that pumpkin with some oranges. We are now on the home stretch and it was time to liven up those pods on the ground with a series of dry brushes, bringing them up to a bright orange. Once this was done, I used UV resin and some old brush bristles to make some reeds for Jen's hideous swamp. 
Covering everything with a liberal amount of slime and grime swamp effects would give the Garden of Nurgle a disgusting and grisly feel. Once again, with everything finally dry, it was time to add on those little final touches. And I couldn't go past the laser cut plants from Gamers Grass. I absolutely adore these plants and there were some really cool ones I wanted to use this time around. Specifically this Venus flytrap that I thought would look right at home on this board. There was a variety of blue and red which fit really well with the color theme we had chosen. Our Garden of Nurgle was looking a little less gardeny, so we needed to add some flock onto the barren areas we had. I found these really cool flowers that we had lying around the studio. I'm not 100% sure where these are from. Their packaging was missing, but they looked kind of crystally and knobbly, and they looked perfect for this. Even the color was right on point, so I made sure to include lots of these on my hill. I then went in and scattered a bit more plant life, including some more laser cut plants and various colored flowers, just to bring little pops of color and to really give this ecosystem some spooky life. Once the plants were all in, it was time to make up the resin that Dave had made previously and pour it into our swamp. We went around all of the amber pods and gave them little drippy effects by curing them with the UV light. This was an awesome effect and I love the way it turned out. Lastly, it was time to glue our big boy and put him in his final resting place. With some hot glue, we put him down on the board and decided where he'd look the most menacing. I quickly went in and made sure to blend the areas where his feeties were just to make him look like he was part of the scene and his guts and decay was traveling with him. And with all our final touches done and a little bit of gruesome grooblies, it's time to show you the final product. And we hope you'll be thoroughly spooked. It was me, Lumberjack Clown, all along. I had no idea. What a spooky time we've had making our spooky board. I hope you liked it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, let us know what you think and if you want us to do the other demon lords as well and make really cool scenery with them. Yeah, we actually cut uh, equal tiles out for three more tiles. So if people like this video and it gets a good response, we're going to make our own custom scenes from the other three chaos gods. So that's Zinch, Slanesh, and also Corn. We're going to kind of do a bit of an interesting take on them rather than seeing what you usually see from yeah. Games Workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching everyone and you have a happy Halloween. It's really cool that we get to actually put out a video on Halloween. The schedule yeah. doesn't. Yeah. yeah, really do that much. Um, so uh, we're going to eat some candy. Is that what we do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, usually. But uh, someone needs to clean all this up. So, I mean, I can. Oh, holy shit, there's a go. <laughs>